there's two types of lucid dreams. There are wake-induced lucid dreams and dream-induced lucid dreams. So the different techniques fall under these different categories of dreams. Wake-induced lucid dreams are dreams in which you know that it, the real world's turning into a dream. It's, it's quite an amazing experience. Mm. When you go to go to sleep, you can literally watch the world turn into the dream. You laying in your bed staring at a dark bedroom turns into a dream. It's quite strange. Mm. Then there's dream-induced lucid dreams. And that is where you become aware inside the dream. And that's what most lucid dreams are. Are you becoming aware inside of the dream? You said you were traveling and you said you had three states to go or how many states you had left before you, you had um, traveled to all the states in America? I have. So the next trip that I'm doing, I'm, I'm already kind of crossing off the list, even uh -huh. though I haven't gone. Yeah. Um, I got to hit Maine, New Hampshire, Vermont, um, Rhode Island. Uh, I think those four. Mm -hmm. And then I got to hit Alaska and Hawaii. Okay. So I almost have the continental United States done. And then we'll work on Alaska and Hawaii. Those, those are two trips in itself that yeah. need a lot of planning because I want to see everything I can there. Those yeah. are two of the most beautiful states in the United yeah. States. Yeah. Hawaii is obviously doesn't need any explanation, but Alaska, yeah. I feel like, would be so interesting because I heard over there that they don't have much, like, darkness or something like that, or there's a period yeah. where it's like, what what is that about Alaska? Is it no darkness, or what is that? Yeah, I think it's um, half the year it never gets dark. Like, it's always light out. And then the uh -huh. other half of the year, it's, like, always dark because That's of how wild. north they are and the way the earth tilts. It's, it's so crazy. Like, yeah. I, I don't know when I would want – I would have to go during the day, but then how do, how do you sleep? Like, how yeah. do you, do you yeah. sleep well, like, when it's daytime out? Right. I feel like I wouldn't. Yeah, I feel like that would throw off your, your body clock so much, right? Yeah, and like I study sleep, and I like I can't even imagine trying to sleep when there's so much light. I would need like all the blackout curtains. And yeah, like as you, much darkness as possible. You need like a blacked out igloo out there. <laughs> yeah, they would just mess with my uh, my sleep cycle so hard because I'd never know like what time it is. Yeah, it's so trippy. Yeah, I I would love to visit Alaska, um, but I know um, for those. Who are listening or watching um this is nate turner um and you said you study sleep right mm -hmm. how did how did you get into sleep because i found you on tiktok and i think i was just searching it might have just been lucid dreaming or the study of dreams because um i feel like dreaming in and of itself is a fascinating topic to talk about because like what the hell is it you know what i mean yeah <laughs> it's insane but, i um Sorry, continue. Oh, I was just going to say, no, keep going. Um, just tell me about uh, how you got into just studying sleep and um, what led you on that, that path. Mm -hmm. I took a uh, high school class. I took a psychology class in high school. And, uh, well, more like forced. I was forced to take it. Mm. And I guess during high school, you know, I, I studied a little bit about human behavior and kind of different aspects of psychology but it wasn't really that interesting to me at the time i was more mm -hmm. focused on sports and getting good grades and that stuff but mm -hmm. i was forced into this psychology class and the more that i learned about human behavior and especially the subconscious that's what i'm obsessed with now is the subconscious sleeping all of that um the more i learned about it the more curious i was the more research i did on it and Eventually, I stumbled across lucid dreaming after I did a project, mm -hmm. and I was so skeptical at first. I there was no way that was real. Like, think about it you you are inside of a dream and you know it's a dream and you can control it. Like that yeah. sounds like some crazy stuff to me. That <laughs> literally sounds like out of a movie. And so I I kind of just threw it away. I did my project. I did it just on sleep cycles and how our brain 
cycles in and out of dreaming and you know you got stage one stage two deep sleep dream mm-hmm. sleep like all that the coolness of, of the sleep cycle right. and a couple months later um i saw a youtube video on lucid dreaming and so i was like hmm, this looks interesting clicked it watched it and i was like you know what it's worth a try there's a lot of anecdotal evidence out there um let's try it try it can't get it try it again can't get it mm-hmm. try it again can't get it i give up i think it's bs it's, it, these people are s- literally lying to me <laughs> fast forward another six months i come across another youtube video on it by a guy named explore lucid dreaming who i think right now is the biggest creator with lucid dreaming mm. um tried one of his technique things and i had a lucid dream and my first one lasted about five seconds long i looked down my hands were all wonky with multiple fingers and zigzagged fingers and just craziness and i woke up five seconds later and Mm. ever since that moment i've been obsessed absolutely obsessed with lucid dreaming Mm. i i've been trying to do it every night and the more obsessed i got with it the more i did it and the more more obsessed i would get with it it just it snowballed out of control yeah lucid dreaming is super interesting it's so lucid dreaming is basically when you're asleep you can pretty much control like yourself and your dreams right for the most part the uh definition of lucid dreaming is a dream in which the dreamer knows that it's a dream Mm. so most of the time lucid dreams are uncontrollable Okay. You just you just know it's a dream. You're kind of just you can control yourself, but you can't control the things around you. Okay. So, I've had a ton of great experiences with that because you know your dreams are stories, and when you know it's a dream, and you just you can just kind of go along with the story, yeah. and your brain just throws these situations at you that you can control yourself in, mm-hmm. but you can't control the things around it. And so it's led to some pretty insane dreams. It's pretty crazy. A little bit. I uh, what's funny is I haven't um, I haven't even seen of Inception uh-huh. as like a as being obsessed with lucid dreaming. I still haven't even seen like really? the one movie made about lucid dreaming. So I think that's that's more of like a dream inside of a dream. Yeah, thing. yeah. It's a super interesting. It's like they use it to like extract information from people, pretty much. okay have you have you ever tried like to visit somebody in your dream i know it was in the notes that we talked about but i've come across um like i think a lot of it comes from like the maybe like the red pill spiritual community where they Mm -hmm. talk about how you can um visit people in their dreams i don't have you heard about that yeah i feel like if, if that was real, I, I'm kind of a little bit of a skeptic of it. I feel mm-hmm. like if that was real, um, it would be pretty easy to prove. You could set mm-hmm. up experiments with it and yeah. you can prove it pretty easily. You could have two people in separate rooms with the same, I guess, what you're supposed to tell the other person. Mm-hmm. So you could, I guess, write down like, if me and you tried this experiment, mm-hmm. Maybe on a piece of paper that was given to you, you would have to tell me this. And on a piece of paper given to me, I would have to tell you this. Right. So we'd go to sleep, we'd wake up, and then we would tell the people running the experiment mm-hmm. what I told you inside the dream. And if it matches up, you could prove it. Right. There hasn't been an experiment done with that. I just, there's a lot, there's some anecdotal stuff, but I just don't. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm really skeptical of it. Until there's something that comes out, I'm really skeptical. Yeah, it's pretty much a lot of pseudoscience at that point. At this point, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, okay. I think so. Yeah, I I tried before a conversation. I should have, I should have been practicing a little bit more. But I I tried to lucid dream <laughs> last. I should, <laughs> I tried lucid dreaming last night, and Did you? Um, I don't know. I I I sometimes I like. It's 
I don't know. It's it's very, I guess, challenging for me to know if, whether I am or not. But yeah. my dreams have been, I guess, very. Is vivid the right word? <laughs> yeah, just, like just very been, clear, right? They've been pretty clear. Yeah, like I can't recall like every single detail. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But I know uh, like bits and parts of it. Like there was this, I think not last night, but the maybe the night before. I remember this. Just these four numbers for some reason eight eight four six. <laughs> No, no, I, I no. will, f- I'll, I'll do for fun. I don't, I don't yeah. think, I'm not a big, like, I'm not huge on it, but um, it is fun. Like, I'll, I'll go and play blackjack, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. That's probably, like, the most common thing most people play, right? In poker? Yep, yep, poker, yeah. yep, yep, yeah. big poker player. I've uh, gambled quite a bit inside my dreams, too. Really? I, I, I kind of find, I kind of find that to be, like, uh, kind of an escape. Mm. It keeps me from... Because I'm pretty addicted to it, mm-hmm. um, I'll admit it. Uh, <laughs> now, while in real life, I can only afford to bet so much, and I'm trying to get away from it. In the dream, I can bet as much as I want. <laughs> not real. Yeah, yeah. So I will go on massive crap sections, sec- massive crap sessions uh-huh. inside of my dreams, and win thousands, hundreds of thousands of dollars from yeah. craps. Wow. And I get the same joy from it, the same excitement from it. And, uh, oh, man, it makes it a lot easier, which kind of puts us into another conversation about, like, what lucid dreaming can be used for. Yeah. So you brought up the fact that you were gambling in your dream. See, when I dream, I would love to, like, you know, go in because I'm a football fan. I love playing football. I will love there and there's there have been dreams where I've been able to do that, but I guess maybe I'm just ignorant. I didn't know you can like go and do activities like gambling, you know, or play football or mm-hmm. whatever, you know what I mean? Um explain that. Like you can you actually like do those types I mean obviously you did it, but like can you go into a dream and just expect to do that is it just all expectation absolutely dude we have to get you i'm gonna we're gonna try and get you to lose have you lucid dream before have you ever had one i've i've done it once and i remember just um excuse me i remember um i was at my high school home like where i it was the home i lived in when i was in high school and I remember going up the stairs and going to the restroom that I looked in the mirror and my eyes were just like red, like red as they can be. And I was like, this is freaky as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, but I was like, I wasn't like in a moment, like it was alarming because obviously you're not used to seeing your eyes that red. Uh, but, I, you know, when I, it didn't, I didn't wake up at that point. I was like, oh, that, that shit, it just shocked me. You know what I mean? And then, yeah. um, then I went about my day. I, I don't know what else I did in the dream, but I just remember it spe- specifically doing that. I was like, oh, I'm in a dream. And then I went to yeah. go check the mirror. I was like, I just wanted to see what it looked like. And I just remember seeing my eyes just fucking mm-hmm. red. <laughs> That's what those mirrors will do to you. We will, uh, we'll, we'll come back to the mirrors here in a second. But okay. we're, we're, you and I are going to work together. And we're, I'm going to try to get you to lose a dream to the okay. point where you can control and create a dream world that you want to be in. Because you mentioned football. And that's great because imagine playing inside of the NFL and you are the star. You've got hundreds of thousands of people in the crowd. 
-hmm. right? Because you can build your own stadium if you want. You can literally mm -hmm. imagine your own stadium that's huge, bigger than even the big house. And you are the star. And you're the one, you're the quarterback throwing the ball, whatever. You got cheering all around you. You can do that inside the dreams. I've done it with basketball quite a bit. Mm -hmm. Baseball, I played basketball and baseball in high school. And I just wasn't talented enough to go to the next level outside of high school. So instead, I went to the highest level you can get in my dream. It was fake. Mm. It wasn't real. But yeah. I had that same excitement. I had the same joy as if I did it in real life without even needing to do any of the work. Mm -hmm. I was literally the best baseball player in the world, and I had to put in no work. I just dreamed it. Mm, okay. So I think we can do that for you for football, which I think so, would be awesome. So how do you do that? You just are you writing before you go to bed exactly what you want the scenario to be? There's a couple different methods. Um, that is a method in itself to kind of journal what you want your dream to be, and the more you visualize it, the more likely it will happen. Just because you want it so bad. Mm -hmm. um, I've found more success with. Um, actually just changing the dream while inside the dream. Hmm. I, oh man, turn my messages off. Uh, I found more success actually inside of the dream and changing the dream in there. Mm -hmm. So when I become lucid, a lot of times I like to meditate. And when I meditate inside the dream, I really visualize the dream that I want. Uh, and sometimes it will work and I'll open my eyes and it will be, what I visualized, what I journaled about the night before. And sometimes it'll be the same. You never know. But, you know, the more you try it, the more you do it, the more likely it will happen. Mm -hmm. So there's a couple different ways to approach it. Um, we can get into um, kind of the steps to take on how to lose a dream. And maybe people, you guys can write this down on something and follow these steps. And, you know, maybe it'll work, maybe it won't, but it's worth a try. Yeah, let's let's get into that. How does how does one lucid dream or start lucid dreaming? Yeah. So the first thing you guys need to do, get absolutely obsessed with it. If you are not obsessed with it, the chances of it happening are going to decrease. Hmm. Experienced lucid dreamers, people that have been doing this for years, have about a 50/50 chance on any given night of having a lucid dream hmm. because they've built up a muscle in their brain that de allows them to determine the difference between the dream world and the real world. So it reminds them more to check their surroundings, to be more aware, to be more lucid, I guess, mm. if you want to call it that. Um, but for beginners, which a lot of people are just beginners, you need to start by becoming more obsessed with it. The more obsessed with it you are, the higher those percentage chances on any given night of having a dream increase. So become obsessed with it. Then you need to work on getting better sleep. If you're not getting better sleep, you're not going to be having dreams. And if you're not having dreams, you're not going to lose a dream. You need to get better sleep. People dream four, five, six times every single night. The longer you sleep, the more dreams you're going to have, the more lucid dreams you're going to have. Mm -hmm. So how much do you sleep at night? Probably like seven, six, seven hours maybe. Six, seven hours. So that's good. I know a lot of people only sleep for four. So if we can double the amount of time you're asleep, we can increase your chances by mm. a significant percent. Yeah. Um, how good a sleep would you say that you get? Like if you were to rate it out of 10? Um, so I judge the quality of my sleep by how much I slept and how well I'm able to get up, like just without having to stay in bed for a little bit you know what i mean so i would probably say on average like a seven or eight out of ten seven or eight out of ten that's good that's on good the higher that number the higher that number the higher your chances of lucid dreaming are yeah I all the night, you're good. You, that's good mm -hmm. that's a good start um if more people would do that i think that's really those first two things are a big thing that differentiates people from not having them at all to having multiple a month are those two things healthy mm. sleep and being obsessed with it okay because you can try the techniques you can do all the other stuff but 
if you're not, if those two things aren't there, you're, you're probably not going to lucid dream. Mm. So once you get those two things down, then we can start working on trying lucid dreaming techniques. Mm -hmm. Um, there's two types of lucid dreams. There are wake induced lucid dreams and dream induced lucid dreams. So the different techniques fall under these different categories of dreams. Wake induced lucid dreams are dreams in which you know that it, the real world's turning into a dream. It's, it's quite an amazing experience. Mm. When you go to go to sleep, you can literally watch the world turn into the dream. You laying in your bed, staring at a dark bedroom turns into a dream. It's quite mm. strange. Then there's dream induced lucid dreams. And that is where you become aware inside the dream. And that's what most lucid dreams are. Are you becoming aware inside of the dream? That's the most common um, one. The most common one. Okay. Because wake induced lucid dreams, there's a barrier between the dream world and the real world, and that's sleep paralysis, which scares a lot of people. Mm -hmm. And so I try to keep beginners away from that just because they've heard a lot of nonsense about sleep paralysis and they have a lot of false expectation. And I think working on dream induced lucid dreams would be more beneficial to them. So um, there's a couple different techniques that involve dials. Um, one is the one where you journal beforehand and then you go to sleep with the expectation of dreaming what you had just written down. Um, reality checking is a great technique to stay asleep and then become lucid. Reality checking is simply checks that you do inside the real world mm -hmm. and the dream world that can determine the difference between the two. So checking the number of fingers on your hands, holding your breath, trying to breathe, pushing one hand through the other. There's a bunch of different ones you can do that will instantly make you lucid because as soon as you notice something, you know, you, you don't have any fingers at all. You're, you're going to question it and be like, what the hell? Like, mm -hmm. that's weird. I'm, I'm in a dream. So I, I like to keep beginners doing those. Um, there's a couple ways to remind yourself to do reality checks. Um, one is putting a dot on your finger. Every time you look at that dot, you do a reality check and you're supposed to be doing these in real life. The more you do them in real life, the more likely you are to do it inside the dream. So you got to be doing them consistently. So in fact, everybody do one now. Count the number of fingers on your hand or push one hand through the other and you'll notice everything's normal. You're in the real world. Mm -hmm. But if this was a dream, something would be off and you would instantly be able to tell this is a dream. And then bam, you're lucid. Mm -hmm. And now you can try to take control of it. You can play out the dream. You can kind of do whatever you want to do inside the dream. So it's a lot. There's a lot more to it than what I just explained. Um, I'm pretty close to releasing a course on it. And I take people through uh, how to become lucid. There, I think I have like 20 something different episodes talking about everything about lucid dreaming. So you can master it hmm. within a couple of years. So, yeah. So <laughs> get obsessed, get good sleep, reality checks, and then what's the other one? A dream journal. So dream write journal. down okay. your dreams before you go to sleep, ones that you may want to have, um, and then also write them oh. down after you wake up. Forgot to mention that part. Very important part. Mm. <laughs> when you wake up, write down any dream you may have remembered down. Every little detail, write it down. Mm. Smells, tastes, people in it, places you were at, emotions you had, everything. Mm. Write it down. So have one side of the notebook for a dream that you want to have. Have the other side of the notebook, the dream that you just had. Mm. And that will increase your chances about as good as they can get without needing to do it every single night. This is stuff you can do on the first day that can increase your chances. Gotcha. What can you tell me about the meaning of dreams? Like, do you know how to interpret dreams? Or do dreams, are dreams just um, what our subconscious has, has absorbed throughout the day or, you know, the years? What can you, are you able to interpret dreams in that way? 
Uh, you can if you if you believe that dreams have a meaning. It um, dream interpretation is a kind of a theory behind mm -hmm. why we dream. Mm -hmm. um, science hasn't discovered why we dream. That's why I'm kind of obsessed with it because yeah. there's no explanation to it. Everything's changing about it. Um, but dream interpretation is quite a popular uh, dream theory in which your brain dreams to show you desires, to show you subconscious feelings. Um, and I know there's a guy on TikTok, he does dream interpretation and stuff. His name is uh, Jesse Lyon. I'm actually hopping on his podcast in a couple days. I think I follow and him too. Yeah, so he takes the dreams that you had and kind of gives you a reason behind them. Mm. So okay. if you're falling in a dream, you may be stressed. If mm. you see your crush in a dream, it may mean that you're in love, like yeah. something. I, I haven't really dove in too much into it just because a lot of it's theory. And I like to study like the science behind yeah. dreaming and stuff, but go check out his page, everybody listening. Um, I know he has an app too that you can type your dreams in. And uh, you guys can get like detailed dream analysis for everything inside of your dream. Hmm. What do you What do you think dreams are? Oh man, what do I think dreams are? Um, so I'm kind of religious, and okay. I think I th I think that dreams. I think they could be kind of an evolutionary trait that protects us. So one of the theories is that we dream and our dreams that night represent what we had experienced during the day mm. and kind of trains your brain to process that information and use it in the future to protect yourself mm -hmm. because in the end, you know, evolution we need to protect ourselves. Mm -hmm. But um, I think that that one makes the most sense to me. I think that um, God gave us that trait to, mm -hmm. to protect ourselves, to be able to analyze stuff that happened during the day subconsciously and protect ourselves. Mm -hmm. I think that's the reason behind them. That, that theory does make sense to me as well. I always thought dreams were... Um, like going to another, you know, with the whole multiverse, like theories popping up. I always, yeah, I was not, oh, I haven't always thought this way, but just recently, I was like, what if dreams are like an, a, just a portal to another universe and we're just picking up where we left off there? You know what I mean? Yeah, it could. We never, I don't know if we'll ever know. It's, that's, that's right. The beauty of it. I guess when you know when we're all gone, we'll find out one day, right? <laughs> yeah, we will. We'll find out someday. I mean, that's why I love it so much. It's just so there's no explanation to it. Yeah, and I don't know if there ever will be. Mm -hmm. I don't know if there ever will be. That's it's just true. so interesting. Yeah, it's a it's a very interesting thing, and I'm surprised there hasn't been more like studies on it. And obviously, you know. You're, you're doing your due diligence and trying to study it as well. Um, but let's go back to the mirror thing. Because yeah. <laughs> I'm really curious of why I saw what I saw. Yeah, so mirrors are probably one of the most misunderstood objects inside of dreams. There's a lot of misconceptions about them. And so the laws of physics inside of our subconscious don't exist. Hmm. So they only exist, the expectations of the laws of physics exist. So mirrors simply just reflecting the light that we see at a certain angle with certain colors. In dreams, it's different because there's no laws of physics. Mm -hmm. So this can be different, one, because of expectation, and two, because the laws of physics just work differently. So if you expect to see something inside of the dream other than your normal reflection, chances are you're going to see something other than your normal reflection just because mm. that's what you expect that mirror to represent. Mm. You could also see something different because 
your brain is trying to represent yourself and your brain is trying to visualize how you see yourself through a subconscious way. Oh, interesting. So you seeing yourself with red eyes is how your subconscious expected your reflection to look like. Interesting. Why? I don't know why. Like who? Only uh, you can figure that out because it's your subconscious. I think I know why. I used to smoke a lot of weed, <laughs> and so I would. I was always not scared, but I was always like kind of hesitant to be out in public because when I smoke and get high, like my eyes get really, really red. And, yeah. And the only time I would look in the mirror was to see how red my eyes were to make sure I was, you know, okay to go out in public <laughs> without getting That's stairs. That's good. Yeah. And so you saying that does make sense because now I'm putting the pieces back together because I had that dream, you know, uh, quite a quite a while ago. And, uh, you know, it's one that stuck out to me the most. Um, mm -hmm. But I remember, actually, this brings up a good, um, it reminds me of three dreams I had because uh, I remember you mentioned religion and you're religious. Um, what are you, by the way? I'm an evangelical Christian. Okay, perfect. I remember when, because I did, I spent five years a part of the Christian community and the denomination was non-denominational. Um, mm -hmm. So it was very charismatic, you know what I mean? Um, but I also spent time going through their internship program, which taught me a lot of, obviously, biblical principles, you know, we went through the Bible, obviously, and learned a lot of leadership skills. Um, but that internship was a two-year internship where I, um, where you, where it was myself and obviously other students, and we were learning, like, a lot of hands-on ministry, you know, mm -hmm. how to how to do ministry and what what it takes to do ministry. And at the time, well, before I went into that internship, the whole reason why and purpose behind me going to church in the first place was because I had an ex-girlfriend that invited me to go to church with her and her family. And I remember during that um, first year, we couldn't be in a relationship, so obviously we had to break up. But I remember during that first year, um, I had three separate dreams of her being pregnant. And they weren't back to back. <laughs> <laughs> they weren't back to back. They were three. There were. It was a one year span. I remember in that one year, I had three separate dreams of her being pregnant, and um, and I guess looking back at it now, like you know, we obviously didn't do things the 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 biblical way, but <laughs> right. um, you know, when we, exactly. And so when we were doing that, I guess my subconscious had put that fear that. You know, because at the time, obviously, I didn't want to have any children. I was young. Right. But right. Um, the crazy thing was that she ended up getting pregnant, not my kid, so through someone else. But, um, oh, man. <laughs> yeah, it was just <laughs> it was a while. Dating, or? It was after because so we, we broke up and, um, you know, we had planned to get back together the second year because they allowed us to get in a relationship the second year of the internship. Okay. Um, but during that year, you know, she, you know, um, she did get pregnant, but it was with another guy. And um, I just thought it was wild how I had those three dreams. And then lo and behold, you know, she ended up getting pregnant. Um, yeah, it was a, it was a wild, wild um, just experience, you know, having to experience that. Yeah. Are you still religious? I wouldn't consider myself religious. I believe there is a God, and I believe in that God. Um, you know, going through, being a part of the Christian community taught me a lot. Um, you know, I believe it led, led me to even start this podcast. Um, it led me, it gave me skills that I don't think I would have picked up anywhere else. Um, but being a part of that and being on volunteer staff, uh, just showed me just it wasn't the right fit for me. And uh, I gotcha. And um, at the end of the day, you know, I respect people's decisions in that, but um, um, I'm still doing. 
I guess I'm doing more exploring. You know, I feel like I, I, I personally feel like a lot of religions have a piece of the puzzle in them. And I think Christianity does play a huge role in um, explaining life and just the philosophy behind it. Um, I think there's a lot of truth in Christianity. Um, but yeah, that's kind of where I stand. What about yourself? Have you always been Christian or? Yeah, I was raised Christian and okay. uh, I participated in youth group a lot. And mm -hmm. I would say today I'm, I'm not like, I wouldn't, I don't go to church every Sunday. I don't read the Bible all the time. Um, luckily through my church and actually through a lot of churches, as long as I believe that Jesus is the savior, mm -hmm. uh, that's your ticket to heaven. So mm -hmm. it kind of, honestly, how easy it is has made me a lazy Christian, but <laughs> it um, kind of, it, it just seems like the only explanation to me when I travel the U.S. and I see the sights and I see how complex and then learning about the human brain and how complex mm -hmm. it is and mm -hmm. all this unknown, unanswered stuff, even with how good our technology is, that just seems like the only logical explanation to me. I, I, I don't see how anything else you, – you might be right about the piece of the puzzles and how different religions might make up everything, mm -hmm. but – I mean, just, and I love the teachings of Christianity too. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, there's, there's a couple of them that um, can be debated, but yeah. uh, overall the idea of loving thy neighbor, of being generous, that intrigues me and raising a family, raising a loving wife with loving kids who respect you and respect others. Like mm -hmm. the idea of that, I love that yeah. and I will follow it until the day that I die. That's awesome, man. No, I respect that, respect that a ton. And I think um, the one thing that Christianity does well is community, you know. And uh, mm -hmm. I am even very open to going back to church for the just for the simple aspect of community. And mm -hmm. um, just being around, because when I was a part of the Christian community uh, for those five years, just being around people like that, it is so healthy and it feels good. You know what I mean? There's no other explanation for, other than it feels good, it feels right, and it feels like this is how you're supposed to do life. Um, the only thing that turns me off is just the organized religion aspect. How and yeah. I think and I think it just you know it turns off a lot of people. And I think it does. There's people that um, that don't go about you know their religion in the most um, approachable way and, so, yeah. <laughs> and then that's what turns me off and I you know I was on both I've experienced both sides you know what I mean I was like that and now I'm kind of on this side of the coin and um, but I respect it you know I, I respect like you said the philosophies the principles and the lessons that you get yes I still read the Bible not every day but whenever I feel like I need to read it and it's a weird thing because I still do believe in God and I whenever I feel like I'm led to read the, read the Bible, you know, I'm going to go read it. Yeah. You know, my favorite my favorite um, book in there is Proverbs, you know, the book of wisdom. And I love, you know, I used to read one proverb, a chapter of proverb a day and it was Really? It was, it was amazing. Yeah. Amazing but, book. Amazing book. Absolutely. But I do believe that Christianity um, like the Bible specifically has a lot a ton of truth in it like even if this is for anyone who's listening and i did not expect it to take this turn <laughs> <laughs> but this is for anyone who's listening like if you're not religious pick up a bible and read it because it's it's some life-changing information in there like i feel like if you're not religious and you just read that i feel like your life can get better you know what i mean yeah um but yeah it, it's the Bible is one book that I'll always read, no matter what. Um, but yeah, that's this was a turn that I didn't expect to take. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's it's it's. I'm kind of glad that you take that because it, after talking about that, it seems to me that you are a very aware person. You don't blindly follow things. 
you question a lot of things. And that's what, and that's kind of the first step to being a great lucid dreamer is mm-hmm. being aware of the things around you and not blindly following mm-hmm. the herd or whatever it is that people love to just blindly follow. Mm-hmm. And so being more lucid, being more aware of your surroundings is going to help you a lot when we start getting you to learn how to lucid dream more. And it seems like you're already there. You're already starting to work your way yeah. there. So. Yeah, my dreams have been so just, and I haven't told anyone this, but not that it's just been, not a bad thing, but they've just been so like all over the place. Like <laughs> I'll be doing just the most random thing, randomest things. And um, sometimes <laughs> it'd be very, sometimes my dreams would have very, high intensity where I feel like I'm just super anxious and fearful and I think that's just kind of a reflection of my internal state um, and so it kind of makes sense you know that I've been having those kinds of dreams um, yeah but um, what is the importance of lucid dreaming like why should people lucid dream well there's a lot of benefits to it and you're gonna have people come out and tell you that these aren't benefits, that they're not real, whatever. Oh, there's a lot of people that deny lucid dreaming overall, which I find quite strange. Um, but one of the main benefits that I've found it is it has made me less stressed, less depressed. I can go to sleep confident and want to sleep more because sleep is such an important part of humans and us being healthy more Mm -hmm. sleep allows you to recover from whatever you did during the day so if you love to go to sleep you're gonna you're gonna sleep more because you love to go to sleep Mm -hmm. and so lucid dreaming has allowed me to sleep more it's made me less stressed it's allowed me my critical thinking skills to increase because i can digest information i can even digest information and run through scenarios inside of my dreams that then play out the next day in real life. I've given Mm. speeches. um, I've given presentations for classes or whatever I'm presenting. Sometimes I'll go into the dream and present it to Mm. dream people. It's quite strange. Um, It's increased (laughs) my uh, creativity. My creativity has increased tremendously because I go into this world where there's no physical limitations there's no societal limitations. There's no, there's literally anything you can do, you can do inside of a lucid dream. Anything you want. Nothing is holding you back mm-hmm. when you lucid dream. And I think the more people learn about that, the better the world will be. I think this is kind of what the world needs is something like this, an escape. People are unhappy. They're in unhappy marriages, mm-hmm. unhappy relationships. They hate their job. There's so many things that make people unhappy that if they can escape to a place where they can be more happy without ruining what they have, because a lot of people are stuck in marriages, but they don't want to lose the house and kids. Mm -hmm. Um, Or they they love their wife anyway, but they want an escape because a lot of people want that. They want change Mm -hmm. and they can go to this world that has unlimited possibilities. I think the more we get it out there, the more people learn about it. I think it could literally change the world. It might sound a little dramatic, but I think it could literally change the world Mm -hmm. if more people learn how to do it and how to do it correctly and not learn false information Mm -hmm. through the internet because the internet's really bad for lucid dreaming, Mm -hmm. really bad for it. Yeah, you you mentioned false information. What Mm -hmm. are some of the misconceptions that people should know about lucid dreaming uh back to the mirrors actually about Mm. misconceptions a lot of people will tell you not to do it that you'll see something scary that really you'll see some you some people say you get stuck Mm. the people saying you can get stuck are awake typing (laughs) in tiktok after doing it and saying you can get stuck so don't believe the misconceptions on the internet there's there's a lot of really good um and obviously i did content it. creators <laughs> and i'm yeah. not stuck and you're not stuck people think that if you talk to dream characters inside the dream you'll get stuck 
like what what planet are you guys living on where you think that you're, you're typing you're uh, you're awake mm -hmm. <laughs> like I, I i don't know where people hear this stuff from and i don't know why they continue to spread mm -hmm. and scare people with it but there's quite a few lucid dreaming influencers and content creators out there that put out good information and they really let people's expectations they they let people expect things for themselves they don't put false expectations on them and i've really toned back on um giving my personal experiences i was really bad at it i used to mm -hmm. spread the false information i've learned i've read i've studied i've taught mm -hmm. i've experienced over the last three years now and i can confidently teach this stuff without false information and if there is i have a network of five or six literal doctors and lucid dreaming teachers that have been doing this for 40 years to critique mm. my content. And that's what they did when I first created content was they literally shit on me mm. on live stream. And I'm watching this like, wow, like this, this hurts. Yeah. Then I went on to their thing or their podcast. I mm. read their books. I studied the true information and how important expectation plays. And now I try to teach lucid dreaming without giving out false expectations. Mm. And it's hard because, you know, I want to share my experiences and I want yeah. to tell people things that took a turn for the worse for me in dreams, but I also don't want to scare people from it. Um, I want to try and, make people enjoy to do it and happy and excited to try it. That's what I'm trying to do. Yeah. So. I think you're doing a good job. I, I love your TikToks, man. And I think that Thank you. Um, obviously I was interested enough to reach out and bring you on the podcast. Um, Lucid Dreaming is definitely one of those things that I believe, like you said, will help a lot of people. And mm -hmm. it will – and it's just – you know, it's cool to do it and it's fun. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it's why not, why not do it? Why not try to have fun in your dreams? And like you said, escape from just the real life that you experience outside of your dreams, you know, because, you know, let's face it, you know, the last couple of years have been very, very stressful. And very. a lot of people, you know, lost family members and it's, a lot of people are very um, fearful, you know, and um, why not go into a world where none of that exists and you're just doing as you please? And mm -hmm. um, it's almost like a like a real life VR, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, <laughs> except you're the creator and everything um, you want to experience can actually take place, and you get to have those, you know, the five senses in there. You know what I mean? And so, um, yeah, I, I, I agree with you, man. Lucid Dreaming should be talked about more. Um, have you heard of astral travel? Mm hmm I uh, have a lot of friends that um, teach that stuff. Mm. And a lot of my followers um, learn about that stuff. And I've tried to a little bit. Um, but I... I, I kind of like lucid dreaming. I like sticking to lucid dreaming. Okay. Um, so they're two separate things then. Yeah. Um, I, I'd say astral projection is more of a spiritual thing. Okay. Um, and so you can, you can believe it's something different or I know a lot of people believe that it's not. Mm -hmm. um, I haven't had enough experience with it to make mm -hmm. that determination for myself. But I know a lot of astral projection techniques are very similar to those of lucid dreaming techniques. It happens during the same time as when you're lucid dreaming. So I, I get the skepticism from people who say it's just lucid dreaming. But mm -hmm. I think it's something that I definitely want to explore more mm -hmm. and learn more about. And then maybe I can talk more about it. I just don't have enough experience with it. Yeah. What do you, what do you know about it? Uh, I do know that astral projection is the idea of um, an astral plane. Mm -hmm. I think you've heard of the astral plane. And your soul, I guess, can travel that astral plane. Mm -hmm. Your uh, 
non-physical soul mm-hmm. because obviously a soul is not a physical thing. It can travel anywhere. And so people have gone to other universes, other planets all over the world, really, mm-hmm. um, or the universe with their soul. And I think it's I think it's pretty intriguing. I just I need to learn more about it. Yeah, <laughs> I need to learn it's more about it. Very, very intriguing. As like like you said, I've had I haven't I've tried a couple times too, but I think it takes a ton of practice. And I wasn't as obsessed with it, <laughs> like you said. I'm sure you have to be really obsessed with it as well to to be successful at it. And um, mm-hmm. but yeah, I would I would love to have uh, someone who studies that. You said you know you said you know a few people that that actually practice it. Yeah, yeah, I can um I can get you a couple contacts if you want to reach out to them. Sweet. And they they teach it and they study it and they go to conferences and stuff and. Yeah, I mean, it, it sounds intriguing, and mm-hmm. I should probably try it. And yeah, see if it see if it's legit or not. You should try to you should try to lucid dream and then astral travel in your dream. <laughs> yeah, I could, I could. I've uh, there's a couple experiments I tried. Um, one was going to the moon in a lucid dream, and I had, I it took me so many times because of my mm-hmm. self doubt. Yeah, and I, I didn't. I guess I didn't feel the self-doubt, but subconsciously mm-hmm. I did doubt myself. Yeah. And when I was able to break through, I went to the moon inside of a dream. It, I literally flew to it. It was so oh, cool. Wow. Mm-hmm. What are what is um, what are some of the I guess biggest lessons you've learned when you have lucid dreams? Like, what are some big takeaways from the lucid dreams you've had? Ooh, that is a good question. Some big takeaways. So because of how limitless lucid dreaming is um, and how realistic it is, Mm -hmm. it's important to know what your mental limitations are as well. If you don't, there's, because how realistic it is, you can do things in it that could mentally scar you. Mm -hmm. And if you don't want to see somebody being murdered in real life, you probably shouldn't want to see something like that happen in the dream because of how real it is. Now, you know, it's not real. If it's a true lucid dream, you know, it's not real, but still the imagery of it could get the best of you. And it's happened to me a couple of times. Um, that very thing. I mean, watching, yeah. yeah, Watching somebody get, you know, slaughtered isn't exactly a pretty, pretty sight to see. And when you see it inside the dream, it's pretty realistic. And took a few days to uh, recover from that one. Now I kept telling myself, you know, it wasn't real, but I mean, it's just some of that stuff is just brutal. So know your limitations, know what you can mentally handle because it's very powerful. This dream is very powerful. No. And it can. I'm I'm sorry, Damien. Were you going to get to me? Oh, I was going to say, um, how much. How important is it to really be conscious of what you consume, like with your eyes and the environment you're in? How much, how important is that when it comes to lucid dreaming? Because when you say you witness someone getting slaughtered, I immediately had the thought that, um, you know, I'm not saying you did this, but what if someone did have a similar experience to that and they were watching like a scary movie or horror movie the night before, or they were watching like a, like a murder documentary or something like that. You know what I mean? Do you know if there's any relation to what you consume as far as like with your eyes and the environment you're in and how it relates to your dreams? Uh, There very well could be Um, a lot of, uh, things that happen during the day tend to be seen inside of the dream and especially stuff that cause an emotional reaction like a horror movie mm-hmm. where you're very stressed, your heart's beaten and you're thinking all these things and then when you go to go to sleep you're hoping nobody's breaking into the house coming to try and kill you. Mm-hmm. Those emotions tend to play into your dreams that night as well and the good thing about lucid dreams compared to nightmares is you know it's a dream so a nightmare can scar you the same way a lucid dream can but the best thing about a lucid dream is 
you know it's a dream. Mm -hmm. So you can take that and not be as scarred about it as if it was just a regular nightmare. I had a nightmare actually a couple nights ago and uh, you know, it, it's pretty brutal. I woke up goosebumps and mm. sweating a little bit and stuff like that. I wish was a lucid dream because I could wake up and be like, Oh, like that wasn't real. And when I woke up, I also knew it wasn't real, but I would have rather experienced it knowing it wasn't real rather than yeah. waking up knowing it wasn't real. Yeah. So yeah, I mean the stuff that happens during the day, um, plays a big part in what you dream about. And I think, uh, yeah, it's important that if you don't want stuff like that happening, stay away from that type of content. If you do, then digest more of that content. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now, we talked, we touched on it a little bit earlier in the podcast, um, but sleep paralysis, that mm -hmm. is something that I, I can't remember the last time I experienced that, but I used to think it was demons attacking me. <laughs> At least it felt that way. Um, what can you tell us about sleep paralysis? Oh, man, I love talking about this so much because this is this is the pinnacle of stopping people from lucid dreaming is sleep paralysis. And there's so many lies mm. attached to sleep paralysis. Sleep paralysis is a biological thing that happens when you dream to stop you from acting out your dreams. It, when you dream, if you're dreaming about punching or you're dreaming about running from something, if your body didn't have a way of stopping you from acting those out, it's very dangerous. Like who knows what could happen to you. So it paralyzes you it, and it does it every time you dream. If you dream five, six times a night, you're experiencing sleep paralysis five to six times per night. Most of the time you're just not aware of it. Mm -hmm. And when you do become aware of it, that's when those weird hallucinations could come in. That's where you see things, you hear things, you may feel things. And it I'm not gonna lie, it can be a very scary thing to happen. But if you realize that it's just natural, it's your body putting you to sleep, you can turn your sleep paralysis into a lucid dream pretty easy. It's mm -hmm. your almost to a lucid dream if you have sleep paralysis you just have to visualize and wait for your body to fall into a dream mm. people just freak out a lot which i understand i mean it is scary when you can't move and things are around you talking or whatever they're doing but if you can just get past it and visualize that dream you can turn sleep paralysis into a lucid dream so easily it's mm. the easiest way to get into a lucid dream is to be in sleep paralysis. And so you shouldn't be scared of it. I understand if you are, but you should not be scared of it. It is not harmful. It is a natural thing that happens to you multiple times a night. Mm. Just push through it. Mm. Just push through it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. Um, yeah, I haven't had one of those in a while, so I guess I've been... I guess I've mastered sleep. <laughs> Just kidding. Yeah. Well, the more the more that we learn, the more that I uh, teach you about lucid dreaming, mm -hmm. the more likely you are to experience sleep paralysis because um, you're going to be waking up in the middle of the night sometimes. Mm -hmm. And when you go to go back to sleep, you may enter a state of sleep paralysis. But it's amazing. It, mm -hmm. You can turn it into a dream so easily if you do it. Hmm. And uh, I mean, to wake up from it, if you guys are wondering how to wake up from it, hold your breath, wiggle your fingers and just tell your brain to wake up. If you can just hold your breath and just close your eyes and just tell yourself to wake up, you'll probably wake up pretty quickly from hmm. it. Um, if you can't, then really work on turning it into a dream because mm. it is the easiest, it's the gate. The gate is opening for you to that dream mm. if you are in sleep paralysis. Mm, interesting. And then what about eating in a dream? I've never done that before. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, eating in a dream. Uh, this is a challenge that I heard about um, a couple of years ago, and I tried it, and I loved it. I had an apple inside of my oh. dream. And it was so sweet, crispy. It was the perfect apple, just red. It had like a little like 
um, reflection thing on the side, like your typical cartoon apple. Mm -hmm. And it was delicious. And so I made that TikTok um, because since it was so good for me, I wanted other people to try it. And I got so mm -hmm. many mixed responses, actually. A lot of it tasted like nothing. It tasted like water. It tasted so sweet. It tasted mm. like shit, like all <laughs> sorts of crazy responses. Yeah. And uh, if you should try it when we get you there. I'll, I'll give you a whole list of stuff. And, okay. Uh, we'll get you to try all this stuff inside your dreams. Do yours taste like an apple or did it taste like something else? Uh, typically an apple. How Really how I expect it to taste, but just so much sweeter. Yeah, okay. So much sweeter. I love to eat in dreams. Mm, interesting. And then um, I want to go there. What about, <laughs> and I'm laughing about it, what about like wet dreams? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so those are, those actually don't have anything to do with dreaming. Really? Um, it's just a bodily response that just oh. happens through puberty. Um, if you finish inside of a dream, you're, you may, or you may, I mean, you may have a wet dream, but yeah. most of the, most of the time you don't. Mm -hmm. Um, but it's just a thing that happens during puberty and, um, I guess I don't know a whole lot about them, but, yeah. okay. uh, sex in dreams, if you want to talk about that. That was, that was more what I was getting into. <laughs> um, sex in dreams is quite quite awesome uh i've definitely had my fair share of experiences <laughs> and i've got to say like it feels like the real thing yeah like i made a tiktok about um how it felt before i lost my virginity because i lost uh -huh. my virginity when i was 19 so i was uh -huh. lucid dreaming before i lost my virginity okay and so i expected it to feel this this way uh -huh. but then after i lost my virginity when i had sex in my dream again it then felt like the real thing. Mm. So it was different than what I had previously experienced before I lost my virginity. Now it feels like the real thing. Mm -hmm. It certainly so if does. You, <laughs> yeah, it does. If you have never, if you if you've never lost your virginity and you have sex inside of a dream, it'll feel how you expect it to feel. Mm. And honestly, it's pretty close. Like. I expected it to feel this way and it was, I mean, it was pretty close yeah. to uh, how it actually felt, but yeah, it's, if you, that's a great benefit too, to lucid dreaming. It, um, yeah. <laughs> one of my most viral videos was talking about cheating in lucid dreams and I get a lot of like slack for it because <laughs> if, if you, uh, you know, have a celebrity crush you want to bang or whatever it is, yeah. um, go for it. I mean, yeah. it's in a, it's not real. It's in a dream. It's yeah. not cheating. <laughs> That's so funny to me. Now everyone's going <laughs> to, now everyone's going to go try and watch like, Oh, let me, let me go have sex with this person. <laughs> That's interesting. That's one of the biggest selling points of lucid dreaming too. Yeah. A lot of people love that stuff. And yeah. I get it. I get it. I mean, it's fun. Mm -hmm. How often do you lucid dream? Cause you said very good ones. You said this earlier. 50% and I, so that's once out of every two days that you can lucid dream. Is that pretty mm -hmm. accurate? Uh, back in the past, yes, not so much anymore. Back mm -hmm. when I was super obsessed with it mm -hmm. um, and I was reading about it all day and all night and I was literally, I was actually trying to lucid dream on a live stream. Mm -hmm. Like that's how obsessed I was with it. And I was reading, I wrote a book about it, like just, I was so obsessed with it. Mm -hmm. I would say probably once every couple nights. Okay. Um, it's hard. It, I tracked it for a little bit, but I would say once every couple nights, mm -hmm. um, two to three times a week. Um, then I took a pretty big break. I stopped trying. I quit dream journaling. I quit. Mm -hmm. I just basically stopped going to the gym and, you know, you lose your yeah. gains. Yeah. And, uh, then I didn't have one for a couple months. I went into a pretty big dry spell. And now that I'm getting back into it, I'd say I'm having about one a week, but I'm also not trying as hard. I just yeah. naturally have them now. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm kind of, I've learned how to do it. I've learned how to really try to do it. And now I, I just like to naturally have them now. 
I don't yeah. like to wake up in the middle of the night. I don't like to um, have sleepless nights trying to get back to sleep sometimes because I'm too Ooh. excited to get into it. Yeah. So yeah. probably once a week, I'd say, um, if I were to estimate. Okay. All right. Well, Nate, well, thanks for sharing all of this information on lucid dreaming. Um, I want to wrap it up here in a second. But at the end of every podcast, I like to ask three questions. And, um, and um, yeah, you ready for them? Yeah, let's do it. All right. The first question is, uh, what is your definition to success? Ooh, definition of success. Um, that's a good question because I don't see myself as successful yet. Mm. Yet. But I think that for me to become successful, I need to be consistent and not give up mm -hmm. because that's how I originally built my TikTok account. And just consistency was key. And quality of mm -hmm. content didn't matter. It was the consistency. Mm -hmm. um, consistency and networking, I think, is also my biggest key. Mm -hmm. um, meeting people that have the same mindsets as me. I think you and I have a very similar mindset. We want to build massive audiences that listen mm -hmm. to us and other people. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it's great that we networked and that we have similar mindsets and I hope we stay in contact. Absolutely. But I think that's important too, because you are who you surround yourself with. And yeah. that is the key to success is being in a environment to build success mm -hmm. through consistency and through networking. Yeah. Consistency has been the word for me for, I guess, most of this year. Like, if there's a word that I had to pick uh, for 2022, and it would be consistency because I saw, do you know who Chris Williamson is? Is he on TikTok? He might be. Uh, but he he's a podcaster as well, very similar mm -hmm. to my style. Um, but he has a bigger audience. <laughs> but um, he uh, he said something in the TikTok. Well, it was made in the TikTok. I don't know if he made the TikTok or not. But he said something along the lines of, you know, most podcasters fail or you know stop doing podcasting after ten episodes. Uh, so he said ninety percent of podcasts don't make it past episode 10 and of that 90 percent don't make it past episode 20 so hmm. but he said like you don't have to be super talented you don't have to be um very i guess extroverted you don't have to be like this super you know like flamboyant person and uh, he said yep. consistency is the name of the game you know what i mean and it's just like anything in life like if you're consistent at it like the gym is, I always love using this example because it's perfect. When you go to the gym for one day, you're not going to have all the gains in one day. Right. You know what I mean, it's consistently over time, you know, you're going to get stronger and then your body will start to, you know, transform and it's going to be, mm -hmm. um, you know, more in shape. And, um, but yeah, consistency over time, I think is a great definition for success. Um, Absolutely. And you have to fall in love with it, you know, fall in love with that mm -hmm. process of consistency. Uh, which leads, I, which... I think, too, um, one more thing. Okay. The best part about consistency with content creating is at any point you could get your 15 minutes of fame. Yeah. No matter how good or bad your content is, if you're posting consistently at any point, you mm. the first video, 100th video, you could get some sort of viral video going and it could change your life overnight but wow. if you're not consistent if you're not putting out content you'll never know you will never mm -hmm. get that chance absolutely it's, consistency is just so important yeah and that's like one of the things of the tiktok algorithm you know what i mean like just it wants you to start hey what it wants you to keep putting out content you know what i mean mm -hmm. um yeah that's one thing i do love about tiktok it's that viral the virality of it is pretty pretty good you know what i mean like yep. you can it's a great place to market and it, i think it's going to take over <laughs> i think tiktok's going to take yep. over um, no doubt yeah 
in, Instagram will be around. Um, and it, I see Instagram competing with TikTok. I mean, you can see it. There's, they're starting to push reels a lot. You know what I mean? A lot, yeah. Yeah. And um, Instagram, I would say, has more of, I guess, mature audience. Like, they're just a little bit older. Um, mm -hmm. You know, it's, and Facebook, obviously, is a lot older. And then TikTok's probably more so that a lot of Gen Zs are, are on TikTok. Um, but, yeah, next question. Um, what do you define as love? <laughs> what do I define as love? I think actually my girlfriend's home, so we'll see if she hears this. <laughs> um, oh man, that's such a hard question because everybody's everybody's definition is different. Mm -hmm. That's the beauty of it. Yeah. Um, how about you go first, and I'll get like a very Ooh. amazing answer put together. I want to hear. <laughs> I want to hear what you have to say. Oh, wow, I've never had the the question turned on me yet. Wow, thanks for that. Uh, my definition of love would be, um, I guess I haven't really thought hard about it. I'm asking these questions and I haven't really thought about it. <laughs> I guess love is, it's, multi, it's multifaceted, you know what I mean? It's obviously that, in, that, that emotion that you have for one person that, like, I think, and I'm going to use my brother, for example, my brother Michael, I love that kid. You know what I mean? I absolutely want him to just excel. I want the best for him. You know what I mean? I just want so much good things to happen for him. You know what I mean? And that, for me, is love. And for most people, too. Like, for, for you, Nate, I want the best for you. You know what I mean? I think that's love as well. Like, I Thank want, you. Yeah. I want you to hit your mark. I want all your dreams and... You know, I want all of it to come true for you. You know what I mean? And I think that's the definition of love. Um, I think and then, you know, um, I have that love for my brother, but it's different for the love I have for you. You know what I mean? And I'm sorry, right. but I don't love you the same way I love my brother. <laughs> you know what I mean? And likewise, you probably I don't understand. love me. It's okay. I won't get like, offended. <laughs> and you probably have a different love you have for your girlfriend, you know, and mm -hmm. then your family as well. And so... Um, to me, love is that emotion that um, that drives you to 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 want to do well. Um, I think love is a, is an energy. Um, you know, you think about you know people who are playing sports; they love that sport. You know, especially those at the pro level. You know, that's a love right there. You know, they dedicate mm -hmm. their time. Um, and it's been hard and it's been, you know, a lot of ups and downs comes with sports and, you know, but you, you stick with it because you love it. You know, I love doing the podcast, you know, I don't have the 1 million subscribers or listeners, you know what I mean? Yet, you know what I mean? But yeah, yet yeah. soon I'm still You'll doing it. Thank you. Consistency. Exactly. And I'm still doing it. I'm still consistent with it because I love doing it. I love hearing you talk about lucid dreaming i love learning from different people you know what i mean um it that's love to me um yeah love is multifaceted i think there's a lot of different um responses i've definitely gave, have heard a lot of different responses since i have asked that question to my guests so far um but yeah love is um you know and then i love the way the bible puts it you know love is um, I don't. I can't remember because it's been a while since I've recalled it. But I think love is uh, forgiving. You know, you know, forgiving somebody. You know, mm -hmm. um, and then there's another way it puts it, but it's one of the most beautiful definitions of love. I think it. I I remember it's First Corinthians thirteen, if I'm not mistaken, and um, yeah, that definition of love is probably. Um, covers majority of the definition of it um, but yeah that's kind of my long-winded answer of what love is um what do you have to say to that so you've you've never answered that like to somebody else before no i've always asked the question and then they never asked it back back to me but i i oh i'm very curious to hear the responses from different people because it's 
it's always been different. Like the answer you gave for success, totally different from all the other guests I've had. Yeah. And, and then the answer oh. of love, totally different from all the guests I've had. I think that the answer that you just gave, one can't be topped. I mean, that was <laughs> perfect. You hit, if there was 20 nails on the head, you hit every single one of them on the head. <laughs> Understanding, um, trusting, yeah. um, dedication, like all of those yeah. is how you show love. Yeah. And through to somebody, to something, I mean, you just... That's the best. I can't even top that. I think <laughs> I'm going. To, I'm going to steal your answer, and that's going to be <laughs> fair enough. The one for this episode is your answer. <laughs> fair enough. Fair enough, Nate. And then um, this last one, I want your answer though. <laughs> okay. Now, this yeah, last one you. is, um, what do you think the meaning to life is? The meaning to life, or purpose to life. The purpose to life. I have asked myself this question a lot, um, being able to enter worlds where I can do everything that I could possibly imagine. I have experimented with brain altering things in the real world. And I've asked myself that very question. And I think the meaning of life, the the purpose of life is, is doing stuff that you love. Mm. Um, I'm a very spontaneous person. If I'm not loving what I'm doing, I will change it. I will mm. instantly quit a job. I will move <laughs> somewhere. If, if I don't like the place I'm at, I will move somewhere mm. the next week. Um, I think, I think that's, that's my purpose in life specifically is to, I like making people laugh. I love to teach people to expand their minds. Mm -hmm. And I think that's my purpose in life. And, uh, you know, every, like you said, everybody's answer is going to be different, but that's mine is doing stuff that I love and kind of sharing my energy with other people and teaching them mm -hmm. how to expand their minds to then learn how to do stuff that they love. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's, that's my answer for it. Yeah, no, I think that's definitely a great answer. Um, and um, you had said something about um, expanding minds, and I love that because that's the whole purpose of my podcast as well, is if I could bring someone like you, Nate, on, and, you know, we're talking about lucid dreaming, you know, and someone may have heard, may have heard of it, but they may not know a whole lot about it. If I could get this information to them and you know, they could follow you on your content creating journey and the information and teaching teachings that you share, I think I'm doing my job, you know what I mean, as a content creator. And so yeah, man, I I enjoyed our conversation, bro, and I really appreciate you sharing about lucid dreaming. Mm -hmm. I will say, oh this is yeah, this is what I was gonna get to. Um mm -hmm. maybe when you the next time you lucid dream, you ask one of the dream characters what the meaning to life is. that would uh what the response would even be like i dream characters are so cool and uh they always just give so much random stuff so yeah. that's gonna be i gotta try it i'm going to try it and uh i'll make a TikTok or a youtube video on it yeah. probably a youtube video because it's gonna it's probably gonna be a long one yeah so i'll probably I'll, make a YouTube I'll, I'll look forward to that because i'm very curious because i'm gonna do the same thing and i'll get back yeah. to you on it and see if, you know i gotta get i guess i gotta get my lucid dreaming uh reps in and try to get that going well, we will, we will work together. Um, right now, I'm doing two things. Um, I'm building a course that's almost done. And it, like I said, it's called the Dream King course. People that Ooh. take it are going to become dream kings and queens. Ooh, okay. They're going to learn everything they need. But I'm also working on building a Discord community for self-improvement. Yes. And that's going to be about all aspects of mind, body, soul, becoming more spiritual, becoming healthier through sleep, for example. Mm. My, at least I will control the sleep aspect of this community, but I'm gonna mm. be getting different content creators in this mm. community and 
people are going to be able to join it and learn from their favorite content creators and people they may not have heard about about stuff they may not have ever heard about. And it's going to be big. I think it's it could be one of the biggest things because people people want to improve on themselves. People want to be healthier mm -hmm. physically, mentally, uh, spiritually. They all they want to be healthier in all aspects. And I think it could be I think it could be big. So yeah, absolutely. No, I look forward to that, and I definitely mm -hmm. will be a part of that community. And uh, I just joined one just like that uh, recently, and I've never been a part of Discord ever, but I think it's one of the best things to create a community because it's you have, like, different sections where you can have different topics, which I think is awesome. Yep. And then, yeah, it's it, I'm still learning it. It's still very new to me, but it, I think I'm – starting to get the hang of it <laughs> and I look well, forward we talked to what about, you do. Uh, we talked about surrounding yourself with people that have similar mindsets and that's what this community is going to be and I hope it'll be I hope it'll be big hmm. and I hope that people can network inside this community with people that have similar ex experiences or thought processes or think it I, I just think it could be big and I, mm -hmm. I'm excited to launch it here in the next couple months and, and get it growing Awesome. I look forward to that. And then, so you're working on the Dream, was it King? Yep. Dream King course. Dream King course. And then, uh, did you mention you were working on something else as well? Uh, yeah. And then the community as the community, well. Like this and group. then I'm also obviously working on my social medias as well. So a gotcha. lot of lucid dreaming and, and, and all sorts of sleep stuff coming out in the future. All right. Well, well, where can people find you? Uh, you can find me on Instagram, TikTok, Twitch, YouTube. It's all the same. It's Real Nate Turner, um, realnateturner.com. Um, that should be launching here in the next week or so. And that'll have um, my course and then uh, pre access to this community. Um, and there'll be all sorts of specials and stuff on it. And yeah, it's exciting, exciting stuff ahead. So. All right. Well, Nate, it was great. <laughs> it was great. Yeah. This was awesome. Thanks for having me on, man. Absolutely.